Hello everyone, we are the summer 2021 Intro to Autonomous Mobility Group here at LHPU in Pontiac, Michigan. We'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to allow us to present to you what we've learned here in the last nine weeks. We'd also like to thank LHP for this opportunity. So I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Carlo Giorgi. I'm an electrical engineering graduate from the University of Windsor. Previous to coming here, I had a contract position at Ford Motor Company in a supervisor role. And when my contract ended, I took it as an opportunity to dive back into electrical engineering and come here at LHP to fulfill my interest in autonomous vehicles. So a quick introduction of what we did here in the past nine weeks. We started off with active perception using sensors, and then we got into some cool software programs, as you can see here in the slide, which me and my colleagues will dive deeper into. And then finally, we put together this capstone project to present to you today. So in the active perception portion of the course, the main objective was to implement autonomous functionality onto a Traxxas RC cart. We used the NVIDIA Jetson Nano as our main computer, and some software communication tools that we used were the Python programming language, along with the robot operating system known as ROS. So here's a slide of the four sensors that we implemented. We started off with our most simple sensor, Sonar, and then things got a little more technical with LIDAR and radar. And finally, our most complex sensor that we implemented was computer vision. So as far as sonar goes, in the beginning of the course, we implemented three sonars at the front, at the front of the vehicle, all 40 degrees from each other. They performed a simple algorithm where they would shoot a sound wave and bounce off an object that was that was in the view of the vehicle and then back to the sonar where it would compute a time value. With that time value, we were able to compute the distance the object was from the vehicle and then make decisions to go either left or right based on the position of that object in reference to the vehicle. I'm now going to hand it over to my colleague, Drew. Thank you, Carlo. As he said, my name is Drew Waite. I'm Currently going into my junior year at Oakland University, I'm studying computer engineering. And I came to LHPU because I'm really interested in learning all things about tech. And I really just thought this was a great way to learn a little bit about the autonomous mobility field. So after we learned about sonar, we got to move on up a little bit to LIDAR. But before we could do that, we had to learn the basics of ROS. ROS is the robot operating system. And unlike its name entails, it's not really an operating system. It's more of a group of software that work together to let different parts of a robot, or in our case, the autonomous RC car, to talk to each other. The reason we needed ROS for our LiDAR uh, course was because of its uh, subscriber and publisher functions. This is because the LiDAR, the AP LiDAR that we used uh, takes all the data and sends that data to a topic, a ROS topic, in which we can subscribe to that topic and use the data for our own use. The biggest advantage of LiDAR over sonar is that LiDAR has a 360 degree field of vision instead of the sonar's 30 degree vision. The logic, however, was very similar to what we used in the sonar. We basically split the LiDAR into different uh, angles and we said if something's too close to the left, turn away from it, turn right. In this next slide, you can see the LiDAR actually in use. You can see it gets a little close to the wall there, so it turns to the right. And right here, you can see there's a little offshoot, but there's nothing in the way of it going straight, so it decides to do that because that's the easiest for it to do. When it comes back around the second time, however, there's someone standing in the way, so it decides to take that offshoot as to not hit him. Next, I'll introduce Michael. Thank you, Drew. Hi, everyone. My name is Michael Purcell. I'm currently going into my senior year at Oakland University studying electrical engineering. I joined LHPU because I wanted to be, get a bit more well-versed in the industry. Uh, in addition to that, I do love hands-on learning. Another uh, sensor we used during the nine weeks at LHP uh, would be a GPS. Um, we used U-Center GNSS evaluation software to track our GPS sensors around uh, Center Point Parkway, as you can see on the screen here. We also used real-time kinematics to get the most accurate result for this. 
and at the bottom of the screen you can see the bigger GPS was our, our reference GPS and the two small ones on the side were our test GPS's. We also use MATLAB and Simulink to simulate an autonomous vehicle um, using uh, our GPS data uh, as our specified path. The pose on the left, your right side of the screen, I believe, uh, was took the longitude, latitude, and heading of the vehicle at that time. We also implemented a Stanley controller, and for our Stanley controller, we were able to change different constraints such as a steering limit to simulate a more realistically smooth ride. And I'll let my friend Samit talk to you about computer vision. Thank you, Michael. Hello, everyone. I'm, in, I'm Sumit Shadia. I did my master's in mechanical engineering from IUPUI. I was working in a company for three months until they decided to move it to a different location. Uh, my interest in the uh, automotive industry started off as a young kid watching F1 races on the weekends. And I believe as technology improves uh, more and more, we will move towards uh, self-driving vehicles, which is what brought me here to LHPU, gain more hands-on experience with autonomous vehicles. Coming back to the sensors, the next sensor which we used was camera. Camera acts as the eyes of the vehicle. The, uh, major applications of cameras are computer vision, uh, lane keeping, uh, path following, and machine learning. The camera which we used for our purposes was Logitech C270 HD. It records at 30 frames per second and it had a 60 degree field of vision. Uh, since it has a narrow field of vision, we mounted it on top of the cart so that it can see as much of the track as possible. So this is the track which we used. As you can see, there is a yellow strip running across the drop track. Uh, we will use this strip as, the, as a guide for our camera. Uh, we used a Python's OpenCV library. Uh, it was developed by Intel. Uh, it contains a lot of tools and methods which make computer vision much easier. Uh, we started off by captioning individual frames because it is easier to work on individual frames rather than the video as a whole. Then we wanted a camera to see just the lane. Uh, so we isolated a yellow color. Uh, once we did that, we, ex uh, we drew contours around the ye extracted yellow color, uh, which is basically drawing borders uh, and making it, making it into a bounded area. We did this because we wanted to use a computer vision uh, open CV tool called as moments. This moments uh, takes in the bounded area as an input and gives out a central point of a bounded area. Uh, the location of this uh, central point will uh, determine which way our cart turns. Uh, here you can see the on your left is the raw data with the camera captures. Uh, the picture in the center is where we just see the lane. Uh, we have isolated the yellow color and filtered out other colors. Uh, on the right, you see it it's pretty much sums up our code. Uh, you can see in red, uh, we have drawn contours around the track. So now the camera knows that's the track. The crosshairs which you see indicate the moment, uh, indicate the central point which you found using the moments. So uh, you can imagine if the road is turning towards the left, naturally the central point will move towards the left. And this is how we know that uh, the cart has to turn towards left. So this is the video that we took. Uh, you can see the cart is uh, trying to follow the uh, yellow lane. Uh, it is slightly towards the, the cart is slightly towards the right. Uh, it is because of the positioning of the camera. The camera lens is slightly towards one side. Um, this can be improved just by adjusting the camera angle. Uh, but all in all, you can see that the uh, card follows the lane. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce you, you to Raj. Uh, he will continue with the presentation. Thank you, Sumit. Hi, everyone. I'm Raj. My education entails a master's in mechanical engineering from IUPUI. My previous work experiences include working as a mechanical des design engineer, uh, developing smart battery systems, apart from work in uh, education. My interests include soccer, gaming, and dune bashing. I joined LHPU to enhance and improve my skills regarding the ever-growing autonomous mobility industry. And moving on in regards to the module, we studied on radar. Radar is basically a sensor which sends out EM waves uh, and detects obstacles in its path which get bounced off the object and are received in the form of CAN communications. The reason uh, we use Python is because CAN communications are hard to decipher. We scripted a code in Python to get the data in simpler terms like angle and distance, re respectively in degrees and meters. As you can see, the images here portray the test case we use for the following uh, sensor. Here you can see the video working of the radar capturing, uh, sending out EM waves and getting the output in the form of angle and distance. To understand it further, as you can see in the image on the left, it shows the angle at 1.9 degrees and the range in 2.5 meters for the specified test scenario of the box. 
place in front of the radar. The issue we faced here was that after a couple of readings and some time, the angle starts to deviate. And this is something which can be further tested and resolved by refining the radar code or testing it further. Moving on to the next portion, we studied about sensor fusion. Sensor fusion is basically combining two or more sensors to get a refined output in regards to autonomous mobility. Here we use GPS and IMU. On the uh, left, you can see an image of a steering control, and the right is the image of a vehicle which uses GPS and IMU. Now, these images uh, are basically used in simulating a simulation software where we design the vehicle and the steering. Now, to test these, we use another software which is known as CarSim. CarSim basically takes those models designed and assigns it to basic uh, inputs like speed and steering controls. Once we set that, you can see that the car moves on the desired path and reaches to the end of the destination. As you can see that there are further refinements that can be made with the help of refining steering controls as well as setting up speeds. And this is what we plan to do with further testing. Moving on, I'd like to introduce Javier for the next part of the presentation. Thank you, Raj. I'm Javier Molina. I'm a graduate from Florida International University. I have a bachelor's in mechanical engineering. I have experience in different mechanical and electrical design software, such as SOLIDWORKS and KiCad. I came to LHPU to gain some experience into the automotive and mechanical fields and gain some references to help me build boosts out there. I covered the machine learning section of the project. Uh, machine learning is a method of data analysis to recognize objects. To, put, to first train the object, we have to use a labeling software called Label IMG. This will let us put a, name, a rectangle around an object and different images. We use these in, we use these images in a, pro, in a Google Colab program using TensorFlow. Once that has been trained, we can create an object detection software to, with OpenCV to detect within certain distances. Uh, over, the, uh, over the nine weeks, we also learned other programs and features, such as CAN communication to communicate between the CAN, or the radar, and the Jetson Nano using a CAN bus, Agile Scrum to help us with data time management and communication, functional safety to understand all the different safety standards across the engineering field, and path pounding with the, all the combination of all the sensors to get within our destination accurately and efficiently. Now we'll start talking about our capstone project. I'll lead it off to Drew. Thanks, Javier. So after seven weeks of learning, we got to put everything that we learned together into a final project, and we wanted to share that with you all right now. The first thing we added to our capstone project was pretty simple. It was just an emergency braking. A system that utilized the LiDAR to detect if there was anything in the cart's path. Uh, in, in the left video, you can see neither lane is open, so the car slows down and comes to a stop. And in the right video, something jumps out in front of the car and it doesn't have time to maneuver around it, so it emergency stops. In addition to emergency braking, we also implemented adaptive cruise control. Uh, we used LiDAR for this to detect the distance uh, of the object in front of our vehicle. Uh, in our case, if something was between 1 and 4 meters, uh, a slowdown state was activated, uh, and our cart would adjust its speed accordingly. For example, on the side of the screen, you can see our set speed was 0.45, and once uh, the 4 meters was broken, our car, uh, the speed sl slightly slowed down uh, every 10 centimeters, and on the flip side of that, if something was in front of our vehicle and then sped up, our vehicle would also accelerate until it hit its uh, set speed. Another feature we implemented was blind spot detection. So along with the LiDAR, we implemented two sonars in the rear of the vehicle, both with a 30 degree angle of vision. So how this worked was when the LiDAR detected an object approaching the vehicle, the vehicle would slow down. And this slowdown state would trigger the sonars left, both left and right to check their vision to see if, there's, if they are clear. And then the vehicle would turn either left or right based on those clearance values. This uh, slide shows a quick view of how the LiDAR and sonars communicate with one another on the ROS platform. The next thing we implemented 
implemented was the lane key. This was similar to what we did in computer vision. In real life scenarios, we don't see a strip running down the road. Instead, we have separate lanes, which is what we tried to emulate using the two red tapes. Uh, we began similarly first by capturing individual frames and then by isolating the red color in this case. Uh, we use another OpenCV tool called as half transform. What half transform does is it identifies different geometric shapes. In our code, the half transform identified the two red tapes as uh, two converging lines, as you can see in green. Then we use the endpoints of these two lines and found a uh, line in the middle, which you can see in blue. Now this is a key line because uh, the inclination and the angle of and the direction of inclination inclination of this line will decide which way our card turns. And then finally, uh, we integrated this along with the sonar and the lidar code, uh, so such that uh, if the lidar sees an obstacle, it will switch lanes and come back to its original lane if needed. More about that will be explained by Raj. So as you can see in the following videos, it shows that all the sensors are working in tandem. In the video on the left, you can see that the car moves and reaches the obstacle, which is then detected by LiDAR. It then the sonar checks for the blind spot for any sort of clearance. If there's nothing, then the vehicle moves towards the left lane and merges onto the left lane. Continuing on that on the right video, as you can see, when it approaches another set of obstacles, it uses a similar logic to use this, uh, change the lanes again. And once it changes the lane again and merges onto the original lane, it uses OpenCV's lane detection and lane keep to follow the lane till the end of the track and give us a desired output. Now I'll start talking about the machine learning section of the Capstone project, how this software first starts. It, uses, it detects anything that's in, it, in its field of view. If it detects nothing, it'll go straight at its given throttle. Once it detected a stop sign, it'll change the throttle to zero. If it has detected its right sign, it'll change the, it'll turn to a 45 degree angle to the right until it sees, and then it sees nothing, it'll go straight again. Due to the problem, due to the power consumption of the jet, of the machine learning, we had to swap over to a jet sitting Xavier and then make these tests and in, runs individual due to, to limit overheating and possible software errors. As you can see, we also display percentages of this on the screen. These will help us determine what it actually recognizes and, and what it sees. What we also do plan to do in the future is fix these errors and, and have more sessions so we can fix any possible software and hardware issues such as a radar giving us false, accurate, false data in the readings. We also plan to implement new features such as path planning with GPS points to refine the autonomous navigation and introduce a radar camera fusion to calculate velocity at, in this field of view. Thank you for listening to our presentation.